spring training is officially happening, yes, Alex. Is. It is. Um, this is the first week. Everybody is there. Pitchers and catchers reported last week. Everybody is there now. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving all the social media posts everywhere. I feel like every team now has like a TikTok initiative because I'm on TikTok and like every team is doing those like question things and yep. you're getting an up close look at these players. I'm I'm just like I'm in my happy place now. Baseball's happening, you know. So we need to do top five storylines. We do. And spring training's like where everybody has fun. It feels like summer camp. Like it's, I need to ask you. Yeah. I feel like. You have fun for like the first two weeks, and then it's oh. like we gotta go, right? No, it is. I feel like from the players, it's like okay, we gotta. Well, it's time to get those to the first season. two weeks. The players they're, they're playing a lot of golf, but again, <laughs> once the game starts, they're only playing like your everyday starters are only playing till the third, fourth inning, and then they're bouncing early because they got to catch their tea time somewhere. I love spring training. It is again, it is so fun. It is such a a playful energy vibe. Spirits are high because anything's possible. The season hasn't started yet. Everyone still has that hope and belief that, you know, might be them this year that wins the World Series. And you just really, it's really, really build those relationships, especially for me as a team reporter, being with the Angels for 10 years. You're with them all day, every day. You're usually in the same complex or hotel. So you see them at dinner, you see them in yeah. the morning, and you really do just build those relationships and stories. And everything's so close enough in Arizona where we were that you can go and see a couple different games a day, which is fun. I'll, I'll never forget Ian Kinsler who had a very long career and was recently on the show. Yeah. He just, a, a lot of the players will talk once they get to a certain point, it's like, okay, let's go. And Kinsler had it down to a science. He was like, I need, I think it was, I forget the exact number, but he's like, I need 47 at bats. Okay. I need 47 at bats, live BP in a game, whatever it is. And then I'm ready to go. I want to get to Detroit or wherever he was going. So, yeah. or Angel. Um, spring training has started. We're underway. Top five storylines that you need to know with spring training underway because it's not just a time for practice. There's also like some real questions going on here. And I'm going to start at number five with Jacob deGrom's health. Mm. Um, for me, that's this is a huge thing because it already was when. When DeGrom left the Mets and ended up signing with the Rangers, he's now with this new team. And the question I believe you and I talked about when yeah. we heard that was like, that's a lot of money in years for a guy that hasn't proven he can stay on the field for a full season, yeah. for a half season. Yeah. And now we hear the first day, the first week of spring training, it's Jacob DeGrom has tightness in his left side and he's going to be pushed back a little bit. Yeah, the good news is if it all goes well, he could participate in team workouts Sunday. But still, it's the first. Yeah, it's like I, we're literally already having these. The guys. first week, it's the first <laughs> conversation that we're having about DeGrom. And it was the biggest concern when Texas made this huge investment on a player that can't stay healthy throughout an entire season. This is what I, this is what I felt like it was with the Mets, with Jacob DeGrom. You hear there's one little tweak that he's dealing with and he's not quite ready. Next thing you know, he's not pitching for half the season because it just never comes full circle and he never comes back to full health and just not what you want to hear. No, so let's keep an eye on it. And, and tightness is a big deal for a pitcher. You need to stretch it out like every single pitch for – 80 to 100 pitches a game like it's it's, it's a big deal true maybe you should have stretched more before your first pitch maybe that was maybe that's <laughs> what it was all right number four if you haven't seen the video or even the picture of alex throwing out a first pitch it is a must it's great <laughs> all right number four storyline the atlanta braves shortstop situation dansby swanson gone he's a chicago cub so what are the Braves going to do? Um, a lot of signs are pointing to Von Grissom being the guy. I know when when they they let him play a lot last year, and he got some good time in the big leagues last year, and it seemed like he was good. It seemed like he, he might be the future. But that immediately becomes very real when Dansby is out the door, and then it becomes, okay, we're all in on this guy. Where are they? They do have other options in camp. They have – Orlando Arcia, who's been a starting shortstop in the big leagues for years. They have a Danny Echeverria that's in camp on a non-roster uh, non invite. So is it going to be Von Grissom? That's a big storyline for me. I know they want it to be him, 
but it doesn't always work out that way. He looked good last year, but this is spring training, and he's not one of those guys that can afford to go into spring training and hit 115, and next thing you know, he's still handed the starting job. No, there's other guys in camp. So the Atlanta Braves are in a really good place to succeed, but one of their big losses was Dansby Swanson. That was, that was their big loss, and they obviously feel good about Von Grissom, but can he be the guy, and will he be the guy? That's something I'm looking at in spring training. Yeah, I just feel like when you let someone as big as Dansby Swanson go, who is a core, who was such a core part of your team, I know, I know the Braves have their their deal is is getting young guys and building them up and making it happen. But I do feel like, especially at the shortstop position, you need someone in place that you know you can depend on that is going to be your guy after you let go of your previous number one guy. Yep. So keep an eye out there. Yeah. Dansby, the hometown kid. I know. Gone. Uh, probably the Braves let him go because they didn't sign him young enough. So they're like, we can't. We, we Seriously. Can't, we can't do it. You're now. over our old. age limit. You're over. They're Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, whoa. <laughs> well, you know, he only dates like 25 and under. Is that bad? Is that? It's kind of a thing. Yeah. A trending thing. Yeah. Just okay. flipping bats. You never yeah. know. Leo, who knew we'd bring him up? Uh, number three, Fernando Tatis. Uh, he will still be suspended for the first 20 games of the season, but he is in spring training and he can participate in spring training. So a lot going on here that I'm looking out for. The Padres are good, <laughs> really good. And they should be in the conversation to be a favorite of in the national league. And they obviously have all these new guys. Juan Soto still fairly new, but he was there last year. Um, Manny Machado is going to be great. And then you get Xander Bogarts, and now you have Fernando Tatis, who will come back. But what kind of player is he going to be? I know, I know Fernando Tatis is going to be great. Anybody thinking, well, he was taking he was taking steroids, performance enhancing. Will he still be a good baseball player? Stop it. Yes. The, to me, the question is, has he grown up? Yeah. Can he turn his career around after making some very poor? off the field decisions because as you said we know he's a great player that was never the discussion it's just that hasn't been the topic of his conversation when his name comes up over the last two years so has he has he grown up the situation there's multiple obviously the performance enhancing drug situation the motorcycle incident before the season started in the off season it's like come on man you had the potential and have the potential to be the the bright young star in the game of baseball and you sign your $300 million deal, like have a little accountability and just be a, be a little smarter. So has he grown up? Does he have the right people around him now? I think Nelson Cruz being there will be great for him. Mm-hmm. He's also changing a position, something I'll look for. Because to be quite honest with you, when I have seen him in the outfield in games before before he got suspended, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't great. I mean, he's obviously a freak athlete. I think he can be great out there, but they probably put him out there a little too quickly. So now he's out there in spring training playing right field. He talked about playing right field the other day. He said, I'm loving it. I feel like this is going to be a very big part of my game this year. Asked what he enjoys about the position. He said, freedom to be the type of athlete that I am. He said, whatever spot needs to be filled, he'll be there. That's progress, I think, in terms of being a little more mature. That is. So can he play in the spring training games or just participate in I, the camp? I believe so. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's that's great for the Padres. It's not like he's coming in blind. He's going to have, if he can. Yeah. I mean, if I'm wrong there, somebody let me know in my ear. But yeah. I, I believe he's able to participate okay. and play in spring training games because, like, I don't know, he's there practicing yeah. with the team. So you'd. I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll hear in a second. <laughs> they think I'm right. Great. So cool. I think we'll be in spring training games. Um, number two, Kodai Sanga and the New York Mets. We, we believe from what we've seen that he's going to be a stud. We believe from what we've seen in Japan in the WBC last time that this guy's going to be really good. But all that changes when you get to big league camp and you're using – Major League Baseballs, mm-hmm. and you're facing Francisco Lindor in camp and all these studs in Major League Baseball and spring training games. So, yeah, the Mets have a great top two in the rotation, probably the best top two in baseball. 
which, by the way, look at this shirt. I just got this. How cool is this? What's it say? Who is it? It's two car. It says Amazing Aces. And oh, cool. It's Justin and Max as like ace, ace cards. Pretty cool. That's so those, rad. Those are the top two in the rotation. But if you can get Kodai Sanga to be what we believe he can be, I mean, the sky is the limit. So for me, when I. I when, when the Mets start playing games, I'm going to be locked in on his starts because mm -hmm. from all accounts, he's going to be nasty. How does it translate to facing major league hitters? Well, we'll see. He's faced Pete Alonzo in spring training, and he had some pretty high remarks to say about him. Pete Alonzo said that of Kodai Senga's ghost fork ball today, he faced it for the first time. He struck out twice, giving Senga big props for the unique pitch. Senga's response to that was perfect. So players have seen it now. And they're saying it's very unique. They haven't seen anything like it. And it's really good. The one thing that we all have to remember is that there will be an adjustment. This is a huge yeah. culture shock coming to a different country, speaking a different language. Even the game is a little different. Now, I remember watching this with Shohei Otani. Huge adjustment period in spring training. They eventually catch up quick. And then the other thing, Billy Epler their GM was the Angels GM when he brought Shohei Otani over. And then now with Kodai Senga. So he's been through it before. So he understands the process. I think that will help him a little. But he even said his biggest adjustment is going to be the steeper grade of the MLB mound. So everything from the language, the culture, the food, even the game is going to be an adjustment. So just keep that in mind that it is going to take time. It's not going to be right out of the gates. If it is, congratulations. That's awesome. But this is new. He's a great player, but he's coming to a different country, a little different game, way different lifestyle. I mean, just ima imagine a, a pitcher. The baseball is literally a different size yeah. from it was in Japan. When I went over and threw my perfect per first pitch at 103 miles an hour, I believe it was, like it was an adjustment for me. You know, I really had uh -huh. to, to warm up uh -huh. and make sure I was in a good place with that baseball because um, it was. it's definitely a big difference. So Kodai Senga – and how he will do in spring training with the Mets for me is number two, which leaves my number one storyline to look out for is the New York Yankees question marks. Yeah. Coming into spring training, I felt like there was really only one, but I feel like I know what the Yankees are going to do at shortstop. They're probably going to start with, with IKF and, and go from there. I would love – I'm excited to see Anthony Volpe as one of the top prospects in the game of baseball there, but – the shortstop position, are these young guys? Is, is Cabrera, Peraza, Volpe, how are they going to do in spring training? I'm excited to see that, but I'll tell you, Alex, this, this pitching rotation has quickly become a question mark for them. It seemed to be one of the top three rotations in the game of baseball. Now we hear Nestor Cortez out of the WBC because of a little tweak and – He's apparently hoping to be okay and hoping to be good to go by the time the season starts, but that's not something you want to hear. And then Frankie Montas might not pitch this year. Uh, I mean, Boone did say that Montas could possibly return for the second half of the season, but he is getting surgeries, getting shoulder surgeries. Right. So that, that's going to take some time, especially when you're a pitcher. Way right. more time. So we'll chalk it up to a question mark. Oh, well, lots of questions. Which is what which is what I believe needs to be answered for the Yankees in spring training. Who's going to be your five guy? Who's is Nestor going to be okay? How's Anthony Volpe look? How's Cabrera and Peraza look? Cause they look pretty good when they were up in the big leagues last year. How's Isaiah Kiner Falefa look? So Yankees having some question marks, not all bad, some good question marks, some bad question marks. But to me, the New York Yankees, it's not all set. They got some stuff to figure out and will they, and how will they do that? throughout spring training is my number one spring training storyline. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213-537-9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest, and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.